What is up guys, Lord Nick here bringing you another One Piece related video. This video guys is the first video of two really cool moves for us here. One, the first one is in general we're moving into the 8.5 meta. So this is the first video to mark us heading into that meta. Uh, the second thing that this video is, is going to be the start of a weekly update video. We'll be trying to get these out on every Monday. This will be going over the locals that I played the last week, if I had played any, and any tournaments that I played, along with general Rebecca-based news. Uh, so this will not be a gameplay servicing video. This is more of just a, hey, heads up, here's what the meta is looking like. Uh, we will also try to get at least one gameplay video a week, if not two. Um, and I will be trying to make a more solid schedule for both of those. We'll probably try to do one at the beginning of the week, which is this, and then one at the end of the week, which will be probably Thursday or Friday, depending on the day, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Now that my Fridays are open, it might be that one. Uh, so let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to talk about before we get into any of the news or anything about Rebecca is going to be the fact that we have a Discord, guys. Uh, check down below. It will be pinned in the comments. It will also be in the description. It will be uh, access to the Dressrosa base Discord. So these are for all Dressrosa mains who, Kiros, Rebecca, what will be Usopp mains, possibly Laws. Not really a Dressrosa character at the moment, just due to the fact that he's built for Supernova, but who knows. Um, and within it, guys, just come in, hang out, talk about brews, theorycraft, make new friends, find people to test with or who have concepts different or similar to your own. Uh, and yeah, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. Um, the... Uh, the other thing is a about going to be about a person that you might be able to find in said Discord is going to be talking about that Artris, uh, one of YouTube's top One Piece creators. I will say that, seeing as he's done exceptionally well making One Piece content, um, and is a very good competitive player. Uh, just got top fifty eight uh, on Carter Matushka's online regional with Rebecca. Um, this is pretty big news for Rebecca, because outside of this, we had, I think it was a top 70-something, uh, like 70-something uh, over in Europe, uh, with similar style of list, not necessarily the same list, um, a while back, and up into now, we really hadn't seen much in terms of Rebecca. Artress did really well, um, and if you want to check out what his breakdown of it is, he made an awesome video earlier today detailing uh how exactly his deck tech went how his matchups went a bit and just his general feeling on why rebecca was actually pretty solid for the 8.0 meta now as we head into a we'll be heading into 8.5 uh i think that there is a big question to be answered and based off of the fact that the biggest result that we have now seen multiple times with rebecca as involved using Gecko Moria, it is pretty obvious the tempo Gecko Moria build is probably your better competitive build for those that are trying to utilize the the top end strength of uh, of uh, Monkey D Luffy. The seven drop Luffy is best serviced with Kong Gun and playing in a build that is serviced to synergize with him and be more tempo oriented. Um. Whereas I like to play more of the control build and it is a bit more difficult to pilot potentially and is probably not nearly as good, but it is something that I just prefer stylistically to the Gecko build. So going forward though, anything that uses Gecko and Luffy will be now known as Goofy, uh, just because I think it's funny because uh, Leko is not nearly, does not roll off the tongue as well. And then we have Kuzamaki, which is the more control oriented using the top end of Kuzan Aramaki. So just in case you guys are wondering in the future, that's what we're going to be talking about. But anybody who has questions re regarding Goofy builds, uh, the Goofy style of build, I think that Artress is going to be better at that. And there are some other folks that play that style uh, in the Discord. So feel free to chat with them. They will be more um, experienced with it and better off at replying to it. I have played it. It is just I consistently try to play her like her control deck more than a tempo deck. So it is just not the style that I am particularly amazing at despite my record this last week playing it uh i would say that it is not necessarily my style so let's move into my own personal week uh because outside of Artress's amazing finishing uh, at that online regional there hasn't really been any other rebecca news so we'll just move into my local scene so this week at locals uh my last wednesday i went two and one 
Thursday, I went 3-0, and and then I was down in San Antonio visiting family, going to concerts and stuff, and on Saturday, I went 1-3. and So, two big things. One, technically, the first two, uh, the, the Wednesday and Thursday were not 8.5 yet. They were 8.0, so Rebecca was still playing into some of the matchups from that. Uh, and then Saturday was 8.5, so I was not necessarily teched for 8.5. I was still playing it like it was 8.0, just showed up down there to visit family, didn't do any tooling or anything, so I went into the tournament a little ill-prepared. Um, so when we were looking at it, though, I was playing a Gecko Luffy list for those. Uh, I felt that the list actually serviced itself pretty well, did really well. Uh, my build was a bit different than Artres's, and it was a bit more control slash tempo opposed to straight tempo. Um, and I feel that if you go the gecko, you kind of should just go into the straight tempo build. Um, despite the fact of me doing relatively well for the first two days, the last day was not great. And that one, three was one buy and three losses. So we won't count that in my overall tally in terms of the win. So I was Oh three. And then I, on top of that had a, uh, a, the other ones was been five one. So combined my record is a five, four on the week. Uh, pretty solid overall, decent showing. I felt like most of my matchups outside of Saturday were not necessarily like the best of matchups to showcase stuff. So like Wednesday, my matchups were, I believe, Carrot, Calgara, and then Grape Lime Dofi. So not necessarily meta decks. We go into Thursday and it was Gecko Moria, a little bit closer, but not quite. Um, Carrot again, different Carrot player, by the way. And then uh, was Black Yellow Luffy, which this one was a legitimate win that I counted very highly for me. Uh, one, I hadn't really been testing the Gecko list up until this week, so playing it into him was interesting because it changed how I played that matchup. And two, um, he is one of the better players here in Austin. He is one of the top two Black Yellow Luffy players, and in general is probably amongst the top five, if not top three players here in Austin. Uh, so it was an amazing match. It was one of the closest I've ever had in general, let alone Black Yellow Luffy. Uh, it literally went to time, and it came down to us counting cards in deck, and I literally won off of two cards in deck. So uh, it was a couple of Luffy trigger activation, uh, Luffy activations that saved me and won me the game. Whereas if it had uh, if it had gone one turn sooner, he would have won the game. So crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, and then. When we look at the Saturday stuff, uh, where I went 0-3 technically, that was against a Dofi, which was a pretty close game. Uh, Dofi found Perfume Femur, though, and was able to finish me off, which is a... He was only running as a one of tech, so he was digging really deep to try to find it. Uh, whereas then, my next two opponents were both Ploofies. They both played similar style of Ploofies. Differences is the second one did run Magellans, and thus has forced me to be like, okay, I need to go back into techs for anti-Magellan stuff. This does also help us with Black Yellow Luffy, which is already a good matchup, but it just gives us more consistency to that matchup. Um, and then some of the techs that I'm making in this list are specifically favored towards Dofi, as these are the two decks that I think, in general, I'll be seeing a lot more of in the meta here in Austin. People really like Dofi. People like Pluffy. Uh, we might see some Katakuri popping up, but I don't really think that this deck needs that much teching for Katakuri, as most of the style of this deck actually does pretty well with Katakuri nowadays. Though Six Cost Mom might be a bit of a problem uh, in terms of just like her ability, not necessarily the character itself. Uh, but we'll see. We'll find out, and we'll see. So what are the texts? What are the changes? What are the things that I'm doing to be able to answer this meta? So I specifically talked about it in my generalized teching ideas of videos. Uh, Cavendish is a really good option into Dofi, as he represents the potential of KOing two characters a turn, which is very, very good into Dofi. Uh, and so we are giving him a little bit of tools outside of just a Norlumbus. We are giving him patchwork. So this is specifically in here against the Dofi matchup, because we need to get rid of four costs. So this helps both Cavendish and Kiros be able to efficiently and very cheaply be able to deal with four cost characters. Uh, it is also another brick, but it is a cheap brick that we can cycle out of our hand that is generally also util able to be utilized by a lot of cards in our deck because we do so much KOing or bottom decking. So card is pretty solid for allowing us to deal with stuff. Uh, plus also for 5 Dawn, this plus uh, 3,000 worlds is enabling us to take care of 8 costs, which is really nice. Uh, but ultimately, this is here for Dofi. It is to combo with Cavendish or Kiros to be able to deal with a 4 cost pretty efficiently pretty early on. Um, and then late game, it can also just keep cards rested, which is very annoying for a lot of decks. 
So it is a solid piece. It is also searchable, whereas Tempest Kick is not. So I, I know people might be like, oh, but Tempest Kick allows you to cycle more. Yes, it does, but it one, it's not always turned on, though with this deck it most likely will be. And two, it's not searchable, so this is adding consistency to finding this card so that we can get it at the times that we need it and have the option to get it opposed to the other one where it's just like you gotta pray and hope you draw it. Um, already talked about Cavendish being a two for one most of the time. He can attack actives, which is super useful and valid uh, reason to be running him. Uh, I am also now running two 3000 worlds and two red rocks. So red rocks we've already kind of discussed previously are really just kind of a tech answer to Jack. Yes, red rocks can answer any card in the game, but it is a six dawn investment, which here for six dawn, I want to be taking over the board state. And so this is kind of more of a, uh Oh, get out of danger button more than a tech option that is for unilateral usage. Uh, yes, it can answer anything, but there are specific matchups where this is super, super useful. Getting rid of 10 costs, it's nice, but getting rid of jacks because uh, 11 cost is actually hard for us to deal with is better. And that's what it is here for. Um, that being said, it could turn into 3,000 Worlds. So 3,000 Worlds is a really good mid-game option. It is in place of Truno, which is a searchable option and potentially goes one cost higher later on. But it also gives us bottom decking, which is super useful into very specific matchups. Ploofy and Black Yellow Luffy are two chief amongst this. And that is due to the fact that this gets rid of Sabos in the Black Yellow Luffy, which is super important to dealing with that car uh, that deck. And the other thing that this gets rid of is Magellan's in the Ploofy matchup. Magellan is not necessarily a card that is seen in every Ploofy build, but in older builds it was, and it might see some play again just because it is a very annoying and good tempo card. Um, if that is the case, then most of the time they do that on their 5 Dawn, which is R4, so that will knock us down to 3, which then means on our next turn, We'll go up to five, which gives us the ability to play this card on curve. Uh, and it immediately answers the Magellan. And they essentially just set us back a Dawn. And that's that's essentially it. That's all it did was set us back a Dawn and ruin one of their plays. Uh, and potentially made them take a life to do that. So that's perfectly fine by me. Um, that's a good trade-off. And because that is a matchup that I might see a lot in my own local meta, more so than the Luchis, because a lot of folks really don't play Luchi in my local meta anymore because they don't like to... At locals, people aren't sweating as much, but if I were going to a big tournament, then I think this is the 2-2 split I would do, but in locals, I might try it out with two uh, with four 3,000 worlds opposed to any Red Rocks, but for now, this is just kind of a generalized idea, so if you were here against Luchis, then this is a card that you kind of want as. I wouldn't recommend more than two Red Rocks when I've tested it at three or four Red Rocks. It can be overwhelmingly too many, um, just due to the fact that if you draw multiples of this card, you cannot play them on the same turn, so you're going to get stuck with them in your hand. Whereas something like a 3000 Worlds or a Tuna Bastardo, if you really have to use them and just get them out of your hand because you have no way of otherwise getting them out of your hand, they both answer decent sized bodies, but they're also four cost each, so it's significantly easier to play them out and still be able to do something in a turn than playing a Red Rock. While, yes, Red Rock answers everything, it does cost more, and that cost more can be kind of detrimental sometimes when you're trying to reestablish board state and win control. Uh, so ultimately, this list plays very similar to a lot of my other Kuzmaki lists. There are specific techs here to be able to deal with the two decks that I think are going to be coming more, way more prevalent because of the meta shift. Uh, on top of that, most of these also help us answer some of the other decks that are coming up. Uh, Smoker is one of those decks. Uh, being able to bottom deck black cards in general is very good. Smoker, now with Sengoku, can go a little bit deeper in his deck, but he is not necessarily super consistent at doing so. Uh, he is also developing a lot of stuff on board, so bottom decking some of his stuff, especially the things that help him reduce cost, is going to be a very big play for us that can also just utterly shut down his ability to stay up at a uh, seven dawn swing so ultimately this card is going to be valuable in that matchup though i don't know how prevalent smoker is going to be um but ultimately this card is going to be useful across a multitude of matchups whereas truno is also valuable across multitude of matchups i just felt like that our weaker matchups we need more tech for than some of our strongers truno helps with some of our stronger matchups whereas 3000 worlds helps out with more of our weaker matchups sometimes or some of the things that we might be weaker into in certain situations uh so that being the case i'm rather teching for stuff that we may not are we are not unilaterally as strong into whereas the thing 
like Truno is actually just there to help double down on the things that this particular build is already strong into dealing with, which is KOing and dealing with five and six cost cards. Uh, that is through KO abilities. We don't have a lot of bottom decking, so we need more bottom decking. Uh, ultimately though, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, this is, like I said, update video, kind of give you an idea of the deck lists that I'm going with. There's not going to be gameplay attached to these videos, but in future videos, you might see me talking about different deck lists, or you might see me talking about the stuff that I chat with other people. Uh, and if you want to be part of some of those conversations, feel free to jump into the discord. Like I said, links down below. And until next time, guys, have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye guys.